Hey everyone. Um, so this video, I just want to talk a little bit about the people that I kind of feel a strong emotional connection with, um, and that's both in kind of in everyday life, but also when it comes to um, comes to I guess visions for the future. And those people are people who share, you know, my very, very conscious desire to kind of address human and animal suffering, and people who are empathetic towards others. That to me really is, you know, is the only thing almost that matters. It, it really, it, it is pretty much the only thing that matters in how I feel about a person, like, deep down. Um, and that, that can be quite, con you know, quite in contrast to how I might view um, their position or their arguments. So, they might be, uh, you know, a, a conservative Christian, or they might be an anarcho-capitalist, or they might be, you know, they might have all kinds of positions that I strongly disagree with. Um, but if I can see, you know, if I can spot what I take to be an honest desire to eliminate suffering and create more happiness and a real empathy for others, then I really, you know, I really identify with them on that kind of human level. And the rest is almost, you know, it's just details. I mean, it may be, you know, obviously if even if you really want to help if your ideas are wrong, then you're not going to help. You might actually hurt things. So, um, you know, they probably think I'm wrong, and I, th I think they're wrong um, in some of their beliefs. So obviously that's where dialogue is very important, and I want to convince them of my position, and they want to convince me of theirs. Um, and that's, you know, that's exactly how it should go. But even given our different positions, I think that empathy is going to make a huge difference, no matter what their position. Even if they're a conservative anti-abortion Christian, and you might say, well, mm, that could, you know, do some damage. If they're empathetic and they truly care about other people, um, any position will be improved significantly. And I think they'll end up doing a lot of good in their lives. Um, because even a position that you know, may turn out to be wrong later on. If you if you carry it out with that kind of a passion and a, an empathy, then that really works. On the other hand, even if a position is right, and you carry it out with a disregard for uh, others and a disregard for the suffering you cause and a callousness, it's going to cause horrible damage. It's going to cause bad damage to your cause, obviously. But even worse, it's going to cause damage um, to people and to progress, the kind of progress I care about, making progress in addressing the terrible, terrible suffering that's out there in the world today. So, I mean, in my example, being something of a socialist, there are so many examples of people who probably, with the best of intentions, but apparently having completely switched off their empathy for the people they were um, trying to save, um, did horrible things. And I'm not talking about Stalin, I, I don't think he had, any, he had any good intentions, but you know, um, a lot of people did have good intentions um, that weren't Stalin, that weren't probably psychopaths or sociopaths. But still, for some reason, in their actions, they were clearly lacking in empathy and in regard for the lives of the individual human beings who they murdered in various ways. Um, and the outcome, I think, was terrible. And it's obviously given um, given a, given the left wing a bad name in general. But even worse than that, it caused huge human suffering. I mean, left wing, we can get rid of it. You know, if it if it doesn't help, if it doesn't work, we move on and we do something else. But that suffering, that's something that is out there right now, and we can't take that back. Um, but, you know, it even goes, so, 
that's my core thing. So if I see someone, no matter what their exact, uh, their exact professed beliefs, if I get the feeling that they're serious about, um, about their care for other people, you know, it's like the Salvation Army. They are anti-gay, and I don't like that. And personally, um, given that there are choices available, I would, you know, probably rather donate to a secular organization that does the same good without that message. That said, um, I, you know, that's their belief, but I know that most of the people in that organization that I've met really want to help. So I can't feel, I can't help but feel very good and very positive towards those people. Um, and also, even those people who, you know, you come across and you talk about some issue, be it refugees, be it the homeless, and you get this absolutely callous attitude um, that's kind of shocking to you. And I know, to me, my reaction is almost visceral. I mean, I get... I used to get, when people came across with that attitude and I wasn't prepared for it, like when they were nice enough people and then suddenly I ran into that, like I, my brain would just go nuts and I would just have to take a time out because it just, it just stressed me out too much. But, um, you know, at the same time you will, like, in life, run, uh, come across people who actually don't have any real empathy for anyone else. It does happen. But in most cases, you talk to the people and you realize they're empathetic people. They care, they care about a lot of people, um, not just themselves. But for some reason, they've managed to build up these walls. I mean, I'm, you know, they've managed, that makes it sound like they want to. No, it just happened, you know, whatever, Na nurture probably mostly, where they don't understand that other that they look down on. Um, so, you know, with the homeless, it's very easy to just dismiss them as lazy uh, bums who don't want to do any real work and just want to leech off other people. When you look at the whole thing in detail, it's, it's obvious that that's not the case. It's obvious that they all have their own stories of how they got onto the streets, and it's obvious that um, given a real choice, people don't choose to not have security and to live under such harsh conditions of being cold in the winter, of being constantly under the threat of violence by, um, by other homeless people, but also, unfortunately, by random passers-by and youth who just think it's funny to attack them. Um, but people don't see that because, for whatever reason, their perception has been colored in such a way. So, moving beyond my instinctive reaction of really liking people um, that have this sense of empathy for, for all other people, you dig deeper and you really find that empathy in the vast majority of people somewhere. But there may be walls. Um, that stop it from coming out and stop it from being able to help other people. And then once, once you figure it out, I mean, this is my experience, might be talking out of my ass, but you know, that gave me power to figure that out. Because that means that even though those people may be saying terrible things about refugees or, uh, native Australians or homeless people, that doesn't mean that there's nothing I can do and the best I can do is try to marginalize them. No, if it's if it's actually because they're not applying the same understanding that they do to people that they, in similar situations that they understand, that means we have to just break down those walls and we have to try harder and do a better job at providing realistic kind of human portraits of the people that are suffering so that other people can understand that suffering and will become empathetic about it and will care about it. You know, it's like most people, when there's a story about, you know, a small child that's dying of some terrible illness, there's very few people that are going to sit there and be like, oh, what a stupid kid, you know, uh, I don't care. But when it's so, some adult human being 
that maybe socially kind of slipped out of the net then suddenly becomes acceptable. And I think those are all walls that we can work on. Um, so yeah, that's really what I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, to me, empathy is everything. Empathy is the foundation because empathy connects us. It's the understanding that we are all the same underneath, that we are all connected and that whilst we're stuck in ourselves um, in a physical way, we can try in a limited way to transcend that um, through the tool of empathy. Um, and I think as we build up more empathy, I think whatever system we try to do, it doesn't matter. No system is going to work unless we build up that level of empathy for everyone else in a population. If we had a population of people that really cared about everyone else, like you James said in one of his recent videos, it wouldn't matter whether we were living in a capitalist or a socialist or a libertarian or you know any kind of state almost because people would treat each other so decently even if they had power to hurt each other they would be much less likely to use it on the other hand um, even a good system even a system that would would be the best system in the world if we don't have the empathy if we only have distrust then that system is almost guaranteed to fail and to degenerate into a system that works very poorly for everyone. Um, and a system that's non-cooperative. And cooperation is the force that I think promises the greatest rewards for a society, if it can be embraced. But it needs that trust, and that trust needs that empathy. So I think what we should be fighting for more than candidates and more than political parties and political ideals, they're all fine, interesting things. They're interesting to debate and how can we motivate people, how can we protect rights. They're all excellent things. But we've moved away from trying to embrace certain virtues that I think are essential for human society to function. And the one I put above everything is empathy. If we could make people empathetic towards people, it's not going to happen overnight, but I think we could actually start solving the world's problems. All of them. Um, but long-term project. But I think we need to get started, and I don't think people are talking about this. They're talking about lots of things, but when it comes to things like empathy, at best it's empty platitudes. It's never a serious effort to really move people towards that. And I think that's what more and more people should get invested in, put more effort in. And it's also, to me, it's a much more reliable goal than trying to support a candidate who is going to turn out to be not what you expected anyways, or to support a belief system that is going to turn out in practice to be flawed and to be exploitable in some way. Not saying don't do those things, but I think at least dedicate part of your effort, even if it's just in your everyday life, to try to challenge people's walls, to bring them crumbling down, and to get their empathy to shine through towards other people. And if that could just become a bigger thing, I think it would really make a huge difference. Church of SDFU, I'll see you guys all later.